Dimitri here and uh, my talk will be about the uh, blockchain technologies and a uh, uh, couple of samples of uh, implementation how to use uh, that things uh, in the real life uh, and uh, what spheres are really, really uh, can apply that technology. Uh, around uh, the blockchain, so many hypes, and uh, uh, you know the, the price. The price uh, in the last December of the last year was uh, per pretty high, and uh, all the participants uh, raised the money on that, and we also. <laughs> uh, that's why I'm here and talking about uh, how to use that opportunity, that possibility uh, for the solution of the business case. Okay, uh, let's go further. Uh, my name, uh, my top topic, uh, it's uh, economy of robots and human infrastructure. One, one, yes, I can use uh, that one. Uh, it only two persons know about, oh, three persons. Okay, who knows about Bitcoin? Bitcoin, much more. Oh, <laughs> Bitcoin is a real hype. Because <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, uh, it's um, mainly technical solution for the uh, exchange of assets. And there is a pl problem with the uh, legacy of the different countries because uh, when you are uh, working with uh, some assets in uh, illegal structure, it's a little bit complex and they want to uh, take more taxes or more restrictions uh, to work with that. Okay. Uh, Let's go further. A uh, little bit about me. I'm. Uh, my name is Alexander Kapitonov, and I'm uh, associate professor in Itmo University in Saint Petersburg, Russia. It's uh, information technologies, mechanics, and optics. And uh, maybe you know we uh, we won ACM ACPC uh, like uh, six or seven times. Uh, the world championship uh, of the for programming uh, and uh, that's the main skill uh, of the students what we are uh, teaching for the programming things this is the future not only in uh, in the technical solutions but also with the business and robotics robotics right now there is uh, the big, the biggest uh, tasks in robotics is uh, mainly uh, software development. I in my opinion, of course, because uh, there are many <laughs> different <laughs> opinions. Uh, okay, and a uh, little bit about what we uh, did and how we did that. Uh, about our project, Aira, I it's. Uh, Autonomous Intelligent Robot Agent. And uh, that's why uh, the name of my presentation was uh, Robonomics, Economy of Robots. When the robot uh, use uh, the money for the information exchange, for the uh, making liability contracts, for uh, dealing smart contracts in Ethereum blockchain. But right now, uh, the most uh, stable and uh, the popular uh, the blockchain with the smart contracts, it's Ethereum. That's why we are using that one. Uh, and we started uh, something like uh, already uh, 
three years ago, three years ago, we met with my colleagues. Uh, I am. I was from the robotics side, and my colleague from the blockchain side. Uh, he's a developer since uh, 2009, uh, with the big, with the start of the Bitcoin and the start of the Ethereum blockchain. He mined uh, the one of the first hundred uh, block in that blockchain. That's. Uh, that's the reason uh, why we met and started a discussion about how to apply it for the real uh, business cases. And we found a couple of them. Uh, and uh, the first one was uh, the drone, drone service. Because the drone, it's a simple robot what can uh, provide uh, the real service, uh, like a filming, delivering, making photo, measuring the air quality or uh, monitoring, observing of the um, some district, and it's it's a uh, common uh, service from the mobile robot, and you can uh, rent it directly without uh, any. Uh, mediators in the middle and the first experiment what we did it was uh, in February uh, of uh, 2015 we uh, launched the drone for uh, delivering uh, uh, delivering uh, goods to specific GPS coordinates with a smartphone we uh, make the ask for can anybody uh, deliver that stuff to that GPS point. Uh, of course, we prepared the drone for that and uh, he asked, okay, I will do it and uh, make it for, I don't know, like a half effort uh, was spent for that experiment. <laughs> uh, it wasn't so much, but right now, you know, uh, do you know the price of, of the Bitcoin right now? Six thousand. And effort? <laughs> Le less than I expected. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's close to two two hundred dollars. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, we uh, spent half effort for such simple experiment. It was something like a several dollars, but right now it's a 100. Uh, amazing thing. <laughs> okay, uh, after that, we start developing the common framework, uh, the uh, thinking way, what we used. We start to think, what about uh, that uh, in the like autonomous agent can be not only the drone, because the drone uh, is one of the simplest and the closest to our case, but uh, is it possible to make the autonomous uh, agent like a smart city, smart factory, or separate um, engine or a service Pro, pro, uh, software service and we start to develop uh, the robonomics network where you can use uh, the unified interface for the connection of the different actuators, sensors, mobile robots, different systems. It's a robot operating system. Who knows about robot operating system in this? Okay. Persons, <laughs> okay. Robot operating system. It's a uh, most widely used common framework for the programming of robots for the different tasks. Uh, there is actually a lot of robots, or a lot of type of robots. More than uh, like uh, more than 500 type. I think so. Uh, there is uh, flying robots, mobile robots, uh, underwater robots, uh, steering robots, differential drive, uh, all the types. And you can just 
uh, use that framework to program it. That's really amazing. And the second part, and uh, what we did, we connect that system, that framework, to the blockchain. The idea was uh, to provide the possibilities for the robot uh, to spend the money directly from his wallet. And actually, uh, that's, uh, we, we have uh, the really strange situation where uh, we faced that the robot uh, be became uh, the owner of the money because only machine has a crypto key for his wallet. It's amazing, amazing thing. Uh, but uh, there is a lot of juridical problem with that because uh, the machine can be the owner of something. But right now we are facing that it can be. <laughs> no, no ju just block the wallet, that's all. <laughs> But uh, there is uh, the second problem. You can't block any blockchain wallet. <laughs> uh, OK. Uh, and uh, in the beginning uh, of the last year, in the May of last year, we raised uh, the fund uh, with the initial coin offering. Uh, it was uh, uh, like liability shares with our uh, partners and our colleagues. Uh, and we raised 5,000 efforts. It was something like uh, nine, nine, 900,000 of dollars, but in December it's uh, become, uh, became uh, like a four, four and a half million dollars. <laughs> of course, uh, but w we have agreement uh, to uh, keep our funds, uh, in the big part of our funds, in uh, cryptocurrency. That's why we uh, not just uh, take the cash and go to some Sicily <laughs> region uh, where we spend uh, all the money, but we uh, keep it working. And here is uh, our team. Uh, in the beginning, it was uh, only uh, five persons. Uh, developers, uh, the blockchain developers, uh, who work uh, with the technologies. Uh, but right now, there is we have a big community, uh, the people who are trying to apply and spread our technologies uh, to the real world. Uh, of course, uh, and we have some uh, advisory boards from the. Boston and uh, other parts of the world. Uh, oh, actually, you can join <laughs> if you want. <laughs> okay, a uh, little bit uh, about uh, the theoretical uh, part uh, of uh, the ideas what we're spreading. Uh, the, eco the economy of robots uh, based on the two pillars. Uh, the first one is a uh, Ronald Coase, new I institutional economy pioneer. Uh, he uh, won the Nobel Prize like uh, uh, in uh, 2009, if I'm correct. Uh, but he described his article uh, about uh, the nature of the firm in uh, 1937. There is uh, like 62 years after he he won he won uh, uh, the Nobel Prize, but uh, actually it's a funny situation because uh, he uh, everybody knows what he did and it was really amazing. But he has uh, he had many um, like uh, many persons in the Nobel Committee who will against his work. <laughs> And uh, he uh, waiting for uh, the situation when the, all the uh, enemies are gone <laughs> and <laughs> just won a Nobel Prize. So that's the story. 
Okay, uh, the second one, it's uh, Viktor Glushkov. Viktor Glushkov, it's an uh, uh, engineer from USSR, and the one of the idea what uh, he developed, uh, it, it was uh, connecting all the uh, parts of the country to the global uh, economy uh, digital system. Uh, and uh, it was uh, 16 uh, years uh, of the uh, USSR. Uh, it was a really cool idea because uh, uh, it can uh, maybe uh, we will uh, we we got uh, a another way of uh, of the country uh, with the such technologies, but actually it doesn't happen. Okay, um, and we com uh, combine those ideas together uh, about the nature of the farm uh, firm. Uh, it's uh, the main idea of uh, that uh, research was that open market can uh, find the optimal size for the company uh, when you're using market relations. And uh, the second idea, the Autonomous system, like a drone, can be a separate company, can be a separate agent on the market. And all uh, those thing, uh, thoughts uh, we combine together and start uh, to develop uh, the robonomics framework. Okay, uh, here's uh, the several use cases. Uh, what we done already with uh, our colleagues, with our partners. It's uh, the first one, it's uh, obvious implementation, it's a trackable supply chain. Trackable supply chain uh, with a blockchain, uh, it's a uh, really, really simple solution and uh, it's really obvious because uh, the blockchain organized the trust uh, in from digital uh, space uh, without uh, any KYC of the participants, uh, but uh, uh, you, you can uh, keep your uh, data about the product, about logistics, about company, and proof that you're uh, clear and you didn't uh, change anything in, inside. Okay, uh, the next thing is uh, autonomous service providers. Uh, actually, not only robots can be like a separate agent uh, on the, uh, in the network, uh, but also uh, separate services can be like an engine and provide his uh, uh, work, like uh, calculations or the, I don't know, maybe object recognition or uh, some other uh, tasks like a service. And actually the blo blockchain uh, applications, it's mainly uh, something as a service. If you want to deliver just a service to the customer, the blockchain is one of the way what you uh, should research. Okay. Uh, uh, the next thing, uh, it's a decentralized Internet of Things uh, data marketplace. Uh, look at this. Right now, we uh, don't know what footprint we uh, really make uh, to buy our cell phone, to using the car, uh, to using uh, some something. But uh, right now, there is uh, a lot of possibilities to measure all the footprints with the full supply chain uh, in the product life cycle. Because uh, utilization and the other things, there is important too, and uh, you should s spend the money for that. And right now, uh, we can measure it. Uh, we can start from the measuring of the quality of the water, of the air, uh, uh, of the state of the soil and other things and uh, provide the data to the global network. And uh, one of the 
first try to apply uh, such idea in the real world, it's a Paris Agreement about ca carbon footprint, where you can uh, make, uh, where you can pay for your carbon footprint, and th those money will spread uh, in other countries and in other places to negotiate your footprint. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, to uh, reduce, uh, mo mo you they can uh, make uh, modernization of the electrical uh, factory and uh, start it, uh, to become more clear and uh, less po polluted. Uh, that's why you, you can uh, negotiate your footprint, carbon footprint. Okay, and the last one, it's a uh, Industry 4.0, of course, uh, in the idea of the Industry 4.0, one of the like Internet of Things, when the uh, things communicate to each other, and uh, here is in Industry 4.0, direct communication uh, from customer to to the factory, and uh, maximal customization of the of your product especially for product for you, when you can directly communicate with the factory without managers, without uh, any different mediators, you can customize uh, your product very cheap. Okay, a uh, little bit uh, about history, uh, what we are doing. Our project, uh, one of the points where it was started, I'm from St. Petersburg and my colleague from Paliati region. It's a middle Volga in Russia. And uh, in this city, there is uh, one of the biggest uh, automotive uh, factory uh, which produced the WAS machines, AutoWAS. And right now, uh, we faced with the problem that with automation, with modernization, there are less and less uh, workplaces for the people. And uh, th this is a not, not a good situation. And we decided that the mass production, it's a bad place for work, for your work, if you are not uh, financial uh, from the financial side or you not you are not the robotic guy uh, the engineer who can tune uh, all the system and uh, can repair it if it's necessary but what we thought the investors they're uh, responsible for the relocation uh, of the production factory the investors there is estimate uh, the situation on the market and their risk for the money to making a bid for th that company or other company. And uh, here is uh, the ro robonomics uh, make uh, the investor and the industry closer, but actually. Right now, we are facing with the situation who control all the processes in the factory. Right now, it's a big uh, service provider, like Google, Amazon, Microsoft. They're providing software, they're providing the communication channels, they're providing the com com computational power, and it's dangerous. It's <laughs> Yeah, in our uh, consortium, we are every time facing with uh, some problems <laughs> with, <laughs> with uh, that guys. They are doing uh, good, uh, like cool work, but right now uh, we can recognize that centralization is dangerous for the humanity. Okay, what can we suppose? Cyber communism, <laughs> crypto an anarchy. Yeah, there is a lot of ideas how to uh, reach the goals and uh, keep the equality between the person. <laughs> yeah, please, uh, make a photo if you want. Uh, 
And cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency uh, right now, it's uh, one of the uh, cool solution for uh, organizing the communication between different companies, different people from uh, other regions. Uh, it's a creation of the trustful sphere um, framework where you can communicate without uh, with a zero trust level. And the next idea, there is so simple. The cryptocurrency, it's the first money for cryptocurrency. Uh, you don't need ask nobody to create the wallet for your robot. It's n right now it's not a problem because previously when you work with the banks, it, it was really head pain when you want to connect some uh, autonomous machine to, uh, to the account uh, to, to make the uh, direct transaction. But right now there is no problem. Okay, the second idea, for example, in Ethereum, but not on, only in Ethereum, uh, it's, uh, for example, EOS, Cardo, uh, I don't know, uh, there is El uh, Cardano, a, a lot of them, the projects with the smart contracts inside. And the smart contracts, it's the first formal description of the business process for robot. You can just describe the business process, what we, you are doing, and uh, earn the money. And actually, it's a future. Uh, the creation of the services like Airbnb, Uber, or something like that, just only with the several lines of the code, right now it's possible. This is technology, make it possible. Okay, uh, and here is uh, the short uh, video. It's uh, about uh, already about physical world, uh, what we are doing with the real world. Uh, here is the demonstration of the 3D model of the Robonomics game where you uh, can be like an investor and uh, you are just put your funds on the market of one of the product and start to play, uh, try to write the money. Uh, with uh, that factory. This is a model, 3D model. And uh, here is uh, the demonstration. We, uh, at first we modeled that process and uh, right now there is one, uh, one of the biggest uh, model uh, with the Fisher Technic constructor uh, in our laboratory. There is uh, unpacking process of, of that thing. L let me yeah it's uh, the funny music uh, inside it's uh, uh, I forget how it's name but it's much more popular unpacking process of the big thing and the next video the final uh, using uh, of that big factory. I think I, I can share uh, the slides with you uh, for Salvatore, Professor Salvatore, if you can. Perfect. And uh, here is uh, the start of the game. Uh, it's a web uh, interface where you put in your funds uh, like investor on the one of the mar uh, market of the product and start to play uh, try to raise the money uh, on that mark. Oh, oh. And uh, after uh, the replacement of the funds, uh, the factory starts uh, the production process. And uh, here is the resources storage uh, and the uh, product storage and four lines production line. You can try it on our website. Okay, uh, about uh, the next task, it's uh, uh, tokenization of negative externalities, as I told you uh, before, because uh, uh, right now we can measure uh, the carbon footprint, your uh, water pollution, and 
we not only can measure it, we can tokenize it to uh, compensate uh, all the pollution in our case. Uh, and for that, uh, there is uh, already created uh, the big system uh, with the Ethereum based also uh, in, inside the Paris Agreement's work where you can buy the tokens uh, for carbon footprint uh, compensation. Okay, uh, let's go further. And uh, the next case, it's a supply chain for, for the drones. The drones, uh, actually, it's, it's a, right now it's rather complex to launch uh, your oven drone. You, you, you need uh, to provide the safety place, you need to provide the insurance, you need to uh, inform the local government that you will fly in that region, you need to uh, provide the direct communication with the service and all the things and the su supply chain for the drone service right now it's not so clear but with the blockchain technology it uh, becomes more much more uh, easier and we made uh, such scenario where uh, drones making the service for the uh, recognition of the em uh, emergency situation uh, location or uh, measure the air quality and provide that information to other side to tokenize it. And uh, here is uh, one of the first video. It was made uh, like uh, two years and uh, eight months ago. Uh, it was the first uh, launch of the drone with the smart contract that I mentioned. Here all the things, uh, the smart contracts and asking bids on the market. Just uh, waiting for transaction line. smart contract like we we bought the service directly from the drone we asked uh, him let's fly to that point he told okay I'll pepper and uh, it will be done okay let's do it and how it works <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. But uh, the next case, uh, it's a little bit uh, Russian phrases. Uh, the next case, it was a mo monitoring of the emergency cases, uh, places uh, in the forest. Because we, we faced with the problem because uh, the forests uh, burn too much uh, in, in summer time. And it's really a big problem because uh, if you're uh, for example, employ a uh, new person who will uh, monitor the forest. Uh, the guys told us we are uh, working with a new uh, people who, who monitor the forest, but the number of fires just rise because they smoke and go going uh, through the forest smoke <laughs> and it causes a fire, it's a problem. And right now we demonstrate how to find and recognize the GPS coordinates of the fireplace. I, it was uh, made with our, together with our emergency services. Uh, and we increase, uh, we improve the time of reaction in four times, four times. If it if if it 
uh, took uh, something like uh, uh, 50 minutes, 50 minutes before, right now it be become 50. That's much more better. Okay, uh, the next case, it's a supply chain uh, for the chemical products uh, where we put the sensor for the measurements of the quality of the chemical product and uh, provide the information about that uh, for the uh, last customer. Should be it. No. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of the product, chemical products where uh, the um, like a curve, uh, when it's active, it's dangerous, and it's not uh, non-active. If you're uh, adding too much uh, the source materials, it can be dangerous. If it lasts, it's unworkable. Uh, there is uh, the special um, borders for, for chemical products. And when we measure it uh, during uh, the production process, we can provide the information that all that things with the quality was all right. Uh, and what we made with our colleagues from the chemical side. Here is, uh, here is uh, the short demonstration uh, where uh, we, uh, it, it's not so easy to make the full uh, automation of the production process because uh, uh, sometimes they don't want, uh, sometimes they can't because they use uh, all the equipment, uh, we measure the quality of uh, the some samples from the big pop party uh, and uh, publish that information to the public blockchain with the Austrian bits uh, in our platform. Here is the uploading of the file with the measurements and after that generating the link inside uh, internal planet file system. Do you know what does it mean internal planet file system? No? Uh, it's IP IPFS project uh, where they uh, developing the distributed uh, stor data storage. Uh, you can, it's like torrent, but uh, the addressation uh, inside uh, made by hash of the file. That's uh, why you provide the uniqueness of the file at I and its immutability. And uh, here is uh, the short uh, uh, description what we are doing. Uh, we are making a, an ask uh, to the marketplace. Please somebody, ca can somebody store for me that data? Somebody answered that, okay, I will do it for that price. You can agree, you can wait for the next uh, bid from the market. And if you agree, uh, the here is creation of the liability uh, smart contract and the replacement that uh, to the blockchain. Okay, I think that's... Uh, the biggest, uh, w one of the big parts of what we are doing. And uh, here is uh, the couple of links, please. Uh, here is the, our YouTube channel, uh, our chats. Here is um, the block one. And uh, in the end uh, of the presentation, there is a uh, rather other dif uh, links to our materials where you can find the more uh, information about, uh, about robonomics and the approach uh, related with the blockchain and autonomous system. Okay, thank you for your attention. You're a good audience. Thank you. <laughs> Salvatore, your word. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander, for your nice presentation. So, now it's time for questions, if you have any. I think the presentation was quite nice and full of examples. So, if you have any, and it was a real example of uh, uh, a real implementation of uh, 
IoT technology plus something else, blockchain and so on, and a successful one in a real market. So, please, any question? There, don't, don't be shy, so don't worry. If you no question about that? <laughs> For your, yourself, yes. You can ask. Yeah, yeah. Actu actually, you, you can think. Uh, it's a little bit a uh, future reason uh, how it came to be. Because uh, you can, uh, you can uh, suppose it's all uh, something really strange when the robots talking to each other and changing money. Why we uh, do that? But uh, trust me, uh, just uh, 10 years ago, uh, I can can't imagine uh, uh, the accessibility of the internet connection in the uh, all, all in every point of the world. But right now, it's real, yeah. and the, the uh, robotization will be the next step. And uh, in my personal estimation, it's like a seven or ten year uh, we will face with the problems uh, with the total organization and we should be prepared right now because what's the problem with the total organization it's the cost of the workplace places it's the problem with the taxes we will face the taxes we should uh, reconfigure our economic system because it's not suitable for the robots and uh, what we uh, what will we do like a human because uh, all the routine stuff will be made by robots. And we should start to search answer, answers for that question right now. And The, please keep some of these of these uh, con consideration for the final panel with the outlook on IoT. Anyway, one more time, thank you to the speaker, thank you Alexander, and then uh, let me. Okay, let me invite the next speaker. It is Giovanni Merlino from. Uh, uh, University of Messina, but in this case also from the uh, another company, another startup company that has been established here in Messina, and uh, is one of the co-founders of this Smart Me IO, uh, um, operating in the context in the area of uh, Internet of Things. So, uh, thank you, Giovanni, for your for being here, and uh, the stage is for you. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so first of all, uh, some, uh, uh, of course, apologies from our uh, uh, CEO because uh, uh, he had a uh, last minute commitment, so he couldn't uh, actually join and present. So I'm doing that uh, uh, in his place. Now, uh <coughs> the uh, topic of the talk is about uh, uh, getting from uh, the academy uh, to the business and in particular uh, telling you the story, uh, so the experience of smartme.io. Uh, now, um, smartme.io is uh, a startup company, uh, what in Italy is uh, 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 called an innovative startup, so it means that it has some kind of uh, special facilities, also in terms of finance and so on. Uh, it's uh, uh, not only a startup company, but it's also a, uh, an academic spin-off 
uh, spin-off company, maybe you have heard about that, is the idea that you have uh, uh, the university doing uh, uh, what is called the third mission, so trying to uh, engage with the, the business community, engaging with companies and trying to uh, extend from research and, and beyond. Um, uh, it's an academic spin-off, so that means that actually the university is not involved uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the company in terms of uh, shares, for instance. Uh, it just uh, uh, gives uh, uh, the company facilities. Uh, for instance, the, the headquarters are actually uh, within the university. And uh, also it means that uh, the, uh, um, the company, of course, uh, is uh, 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 branching out of the, uh, the university, uh, in particular the research team experience. So, of course, to be a spin-off, you need to be uh, uh, part of a, a research team within the university. Now, uh, this uh, company is uh, uh, actually born out of uh, uh, um, an, an experience, an experience uh, which starts uh, uh, three to four years ago. Uh, and uh, was uh, uh, mostly uh, sort of a very uh, unplanned uh, bottom-up approach to uh, uh, the business part of um, uh, the research initiatives. But uh, I'll show you some slides about that uh, later on. Uh, but what was the problem to attack? Uh, the idea was uh, we wanted to tackle uh, um, uh, issues related to the explosion of uh, uh, IoT devices, uh, uh, so uh, the, the real actualization of the Internet of Things, say, uh, dream, uh, but trying to, to uh, uh, um, look it from the angle of uh, uh, a specific, uh, even if very, very widespread uh, uh, um, uh, need, desire, which is that of uh, getting a smarter life. In particular, getting uh, uh, towards uh, uh, the, the kind of uh, smart city uh, uh, kind of initiatives you have heard uh, about uh, uh, in the last few years. Uh, but uh, this slide is to tell you about uh, what the impact can be uh, uh, out of smart city initiatives. You have to consider that, uh, okay, there are quite a number of initiatives around the world for smart cities. But uh, uh, today, most projects uh, are actually focused uh, on large, uh, large municipalities. Actually, uh, we're talking uh, on a metropolitan scale, uh, or even uh, what they call the mega cities. So uh, cities typically which uh, go uh, on uh, the uh, uh, populations uh, uh, upwards from uh, uh, a few millions, typically. Uh, we are talking about, say, the uh, sort of the capitals, to be clear. So, uh, uh, very global cities like can be New York or can be Tokyo or whatever. Uh, and of course, that means that there there's the need for large investments. That means that uh, you need uh, 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 very very uh, ambitious plans and also ambitious investments that uh, typically span uh, a very large. Uh, uh, time spans and uh, typically uh, uh, need uh, uh, a very uh, upfront commitment. But the, the reality, the problem is instead uh, we are faced with the, the, the uh, we face the sort of uh, a kind of uh, um, uh, mirrored situation where actually what we have is that 85% uh, of the world population actually doesn't live those big global mega cities. They live actually in small to medium municipalities. And uh, what they are typically uh, confronted with is uh, having a very small budget. Uh, not only that, but sometimes there's, there's even not uh, any advanced planning for that. Sometimes there can be some budget, uh, some excess budget actually, because we are talking about uh, non-essential, say, uh, stuff for a city, uh, and typically what happens is that uh, you, you have to piggyback on any kind of access budget uh, uh, after the fact, without any sort of uh, very uh, special planning. 
and, uh, and the, these uh, charts uh, let you uh, quickly understand that. Actually, uh, this is uh, uh, United States, uh, Italy, Japan, China, India, but whatever you look at, you see that the, the green uh, 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 part of the chart, which is actually where the most of the population resides uh, by the side, is actually for small to medium cities. Of course, uh, what we want to do with the smart cities is uh, trying to uh, uh, give uh, 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 answers, give solutions to the concerns for citizens worldwide. That means uh, a huge number, of course, of course, of concerns. But typically, we are talking about uh, uh, being able to uh, uh, engage uh, uh, with a healthier life for the citizens trying to be smarter, uh, the two are somehow coupled. Typically what we have is um, unhealthy uh, situations, both when we talk about, uh, say, environmental uh, issues, uh, uh, which, okay, are, of course, very, very typical of uh, huge cities, but are also uh, uh, increasingly an issue even in smaller cities. Uh, because, of course, you have pollution and you have traffic and the, uh, the typical stuff which, uh, uh, as citizens, of course, uh, 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 gives us uh, uh, um, uh, problems in, the, in uh, uh, everyday life. It means also a smarter life because, okay, we are always uh, uh, getting uh, more and more hyper-connected. We are getting more and more uh, stressed out by, by many things. I mean. Uh, even if you consider typically the work-life balance, uh, 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 it's tilting on the wrong side, of course, uh, of the uh, um, trade-off of the equation. So what we need actually is a way to restore a bit of, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, smarter way also to engage with all the services that uh, a city can give us in order to lose uh, less time on uh, uh, menial tasks and uh, getting uh, uh, more down to the substance of what uh, matters to us. Also, if we think about freedom uh, uh, in the largest sense possible, and uh, especially if we think about privacy, which is typically uh, one of the uh, uh, topics uh, which mostly uh, 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 is getting uh, recently uh, uh, um, uh, hot uh, uh, in the hot news in, in the headlines because uh, we are constantly confronted with uh, 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 large issues which are actually not uh, uh, um, not understood enough and not uh, say solved correctly uh, even by the big players. Uh, when I when I say uh, when I talk about uh, the news, uh, I'm referring to recent news about. Uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook, about Google, about uh, all the, the, the uh, four or five big players uh, that uh, uh, are a boon to us for uh, the ease uh, with which uh, we can uh, uh, do a lot of, uh, of stuff daily, but uh, more and more give us also the creeps because maybe we don't know actually what's happening uh, behind the scenes for, uh, with our data. And uh, that, of course, means uh, that uh, as citizen, in the end, we want to, to get uh, efficient services. But we need efficient services, of course, uh, even possibly uh, without waiting for uh, uh, huge investments. So we possibly want them uh, at the, the cheapest cost uh, we can uh, get away with. Now, uh, our company, is trying, uh, of course, uh, uh, nimbly to uh, tackle these issues by taking, first of all, the right approach. Uh, even uh, uh, when uh, there was the talk before by Alex, uh, the, the idea is that uh, it's very important that uh, uh, the approach is uh, forward-looking because we can't uh, just make uh, uh, solutions for tomorrow, but we have to think about uh, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, what's going to happen. So um, what we, we did, first of all, is uh, trying to transfer in, in, the, uh, in our uh, company, in our uh, uh, efforts, an approach which we uh, 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 envisioned, we devised uh, 
uh, in our earliest uh, 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 research efforts uh, um, as a research team. And th that's an approach which uh, Professor Pulefito uh, before also uh, hinted at, which is the idea that uh, we uh, try to have uh, what we call the sort of an uh, IO cloud uh, as a, a way to uh, uh, manage, a way to uh, use, uh, a way also to uh, uh, handle for uh, other people, as we'll see, as we'll see in a moment, uh, IoT edge infrastructure. Uh, so actually considering IoT as a natural extension of the data center uh, um, and trying to apply cloud uh, uh, typical uh, um, approaches for the management of resources by exposing, for instance, a standard cloud-oriented uh, um, API for the resource management. And uh, uh, doing that as a way to separate concerns when needed between uh, applications, vertical, say, and uh, infrastructure. And uh, uh, also as a way to actually uh, uh, peruse as much as possible uh, infrastructure. If we, if we consider now the push, uh, the very recent push uh, towards uh, edge computing, the idea is exactly that, is exactly considering uh, uh, IoT devices uh, to their fullest extent. So that actually means that uh, we uh, envision uh, the way to offload computation, offload any general workload, any task across clouds and across also uh, edge infrastructure. Now, Stack for Things, okay, uh, it was already um, mentioned before, so uh, this is actually uh, one of the pieces of the, uh, our stack, the middleware which actually enables us to uh, pursue this uh, uh, IO Cloud approach. Um, I won't delve too much into that, apart from uh, uh, reiterating that uh, um, it's a, a, an open approach, and in particular, it's a very, say, kind of ecosystem-like approach. We based our solution on, on OpenStack. OpenStack, uh, if you have heard about that, is, uh, has been typically referred recently as kind of uh, the infrastructure operating system. We uh, uh, recently uh, tried to uh, uh, discuss about that with the, the uh, OpenStack Edge Computing Group, and the idea is that it absolutely is poised to become a sort of edge operating system. So uh, this is meant to be a, 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 a system, of course, of very a system of systems. So let's say so very loosely coupled where needed, and with uh, uh, a number of uh, uh, say even. Uh, um, uncharted uh, territory of uh, 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 unplanned uh, possibilities uh, beyond that. If you consider that uh, we are talking about Edge now, it started, the talks started in um, 2017, but before that it was absolutely science fiction to talk about that in the OpenStack community. But the idea is that it is growing very much beyond its initial concerns. The idea is that uh, uh, if you ever heard about that in the OpenStack community, there's the reference to the big tent approach the big tent because the idea is that you have uh, uh, a number of poles and you can always uh, uh, grow this number of poles uh, of concerns of uh, 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 communities which can be involved in the process. If you can, can think about that uh, 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 with an analogy, it's not unlike uh, the Linux community. The Linux community started off, of course, in, uh, in the server uh, uh, space, in the, in the data center space, but you very well know now that uh, Linux uh, has gone uh, far and beyond that and actually it's embracing uh, 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 each and every single, say, computing space, from mobiles to supercomputers and whatever is there in, uh, in between. Now, uh, smart me, you, okay, you see the trademark, if it's uh, pending, of course, because the idea is that uh, we have a, a, a full stack which goes beyond Stack for Things. Stack for Things is very important because it's uh, actually the uh, uh, infrastructure uh, uh, management uh, uh, um, uh, middleware. It, we, we can call it, uh, we typically call it in some of our, our uh, uh, materials, uh, uh, kind of control plane for uh, for the IoT edge systems. 
so where you, what you see here is the city service bus, which is uh, just a, a concept to embody both a control plane, but also a data plane. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, some working solutions for the data plane. It's a bit less interesting for us for the reason that um, we uh, have more than one solutions for that, and we are totally able to plug and play with each and every data plane that we want. And we can do that uh, at runtime. So the idea is that we are not coupled, we are not married with a specific solution. Um, you see the smart me box as a way, of course, to uh, 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 give you uh, the, um, uh, the kind of reference, uh, uh, say, platform. But smart me box, as we'll see in a moment, means uh, any kind of uh, device that we are able to support. For instance, uh, we have the smart me box actually with the hashtag, which is the one for the smart city project. But uh, we, of course, have um, support for uh, a, a number of uh, commercial uh, off-the-shelf uh, 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 systems like uh, uh, Arduinos, uh, uh, like the Raspberry Pis. We have uh, 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 preliminary proof of concept support also for mobiles, in particular Android-based ones. So um, the idea is that uh, with this kind of, uh, of uh, system and also with this kind of approach, we are able to engage and uh, uh, interconnect a number of services. Now, uh, uh, the reason for the, the ecology tag in this slide is because, uh, you know, when you study ecology, we um, talk about ecosystems. The idea is that uh, for us, uh, the smart city uh, uh, is and should absolutely be an ecosystem. You cannot, uh, for instance, even if you are, uh, uh, say, uh, ambitious enough, you cannot cover uh, uh, each and every concern, each and every space. So it is absolutely meant to be a way to build a community, this kind of approach we have. So we are actually doing that in particular, as we'll see in a moment, uh, in, in, in Messina and also uh, outside of Messina. We, are, we have just that, uh, done that uh, a number of times. So actually trying to be a sort of a hub for, uh, say, uh, uh, reaching out to, on one end, the municipalities, but on the other, uh, the, the companies that can fill that specific niche. Now, uh, so uh, we are play, playing uh, somehow the role of the hub, both from a technological perspective, but also from a sort of human perspective. Uh, and okay, and of course uh, that also means uh, that we try to uh, cross, of course, the, the pond. So we try to have uh, even very specific, very, uh, even closed, in some cases, verticals, trying to be any way able to uh, interconnect them, trying any way to be able to uh, uh, have sort of an horizontal way to, uh, 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 say, enhance services by doing something which is not even expected uh, from the get-go uh, by the, the specific provider, by the specific company. And that's uh, uh, possible once we, we take this kind of approach. In terms of, uh, okay, this is uh, uh, even higher level philosophy, but uh, just to be clear, uh, it's important that uh, uh, we mention the fact that uh, uh, this kind of uh, cross-pollination, uh, this kind of uh, ecosystem building cannot be possible without uh, uh, a multi-level uh, kind of approach to openness. So we are absolutely open uh, and open on uh, several levels. Uh, here we are talking about open software, of course, that's uh, uh, the deal when we talk about the, the smart me stack and specifically stack for things. But no, not only that, we are talking about open hardware. So that means that the hardware is absolutely available in terms of the, the, the blueprint, in terms of the schematics uh, for anybody to, to uh, 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 tinker with. Um, if you uh, uh, think about the, these words and you talk about hardware, possibly 
you are thinking about Arduino, and we absolutely love the Arduino approach. Actually, a bit of history, because uh, maybe uh, you don't know yet, but uh, this company actually is a sort of a spin-off of a spin-off, if you, if you bear with me, because uh, it started uh, uh, in a previous incarnation as the Arduino Labs. So actually, we have the expertise and we have the, the, the uh, history uh, of uh, a, a long collaboration with the Arduino. Um, the problem was that uh, maybe you have heard about the Arduino forks uh, and uh, uh, the reunion. So anyway, there was some kind of reshuffling inside the company. So there was no uh, uh, room for uh, um, uh, uh, proceeding with the collaboration. But what we did is uh, anyway embody this kind of approach. So we are now launching the Arancino, Arancino, uh, if you want in Italian, uh, CC site to uh, promote the uh, Arancino uh, uh, platform. Uh, so actually, uh, even in this case, we are getting a trade market. Uh, uh, what is uh, 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 not only a single product, but an approach to the product. And uh, we have uh, somehow uh, taken a page or two from our previous experience. Uh, our Arduino Labs uh, uh, was uh, 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 working uh, uh, in the last few years uh, on many Arduino-related projects. But one of the most interesting at the time was uh, on the Arduino UN platform, if you have heard about that. The idea was not the typical Arduino uh, microcontroller-based system. Actually, the idea was um, getting a bit beyond that getting even a bit beyond the, the single board computer uh, ecosystem. So uh, the typical Raspberry Pi or, or similar kind of device. Instead, what, what we um, got into was a kind of a hybrid uh, system, an hybrid approach. Uh, the idea was having uh, a um, mixed solution uh, uh, single uh, um, uh, board uh, computer with a uh, a microprocessor and a microcontroller uh, um, on, on the same board. Now, that idea was nice. Unfortunately, it was not very uh, successful within the uh, uh, Arduino company, in the sense that they didn't pursue it uh, much further. It was, uh, of course, it is still available as a platform, but was not, uh, say, center stage in their, in their activities. So what we did actually was uh, uh, trying to uh, pursue it further with our uh, uh, recent initiative. So even the Arancino is meant to be a platform where you can have a number of different uh, and communicating subsystems on board. So one or more uh, uh, microprocessors, uh, one or more, uh, uh, say, full-blown uh, uh, environments, so possibly Linux-based operating systems uh, running on top. Uh, and on the other, uh, uh, one or more microcontrollers uh, for uh, uh, um, both driving uh, uh, sensors actu actuators, so uh, uh, keeping with the vision of uh, uh, multi-pronged cyber-physical systems. But on the other hand, also the possibility to uh, even uh, uh, um, uh, assign and deploy uh, different kind of uh, 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 boxes, say, um, uh, according to your specific needs. And uh, you see here that the tag is about the neurology, because <laughs> uh, we found uh, uh, a nice way to tell this story by uh, looking at uh, what uh, is the, the uh, actual, uh, say, working of the brain. You can uh, have a look at a TED talk, uh, uh, which I think is called uh, the divided brain. The idea is that, you know, you have um, typically the uh, left and the right hemispheres that uh, keep, uh, take on very different tests. So they are very specialized somehow. Uh, um, they are also complementary in the sense that uh, 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 they uh, attack very different problems. And uh, in, in our case, the idea is trying to have a look uh, at the, the two hemispheres as uh, the two very different ways of, uh, 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 say, um, programming and so engaging with uh, uh, the, the physical systems uh, by, uh, by uh, using the cyber systems. 
because uh, you can have, of course, a sort of more real-time approach to uh, the, the uh, engaging, of course, uh, the sensors actuators. And in that case, uh, we have uh, uh, the, the kind of microcontroller-based approach. But on the other, you can have some more, uh, say, longer term, more batch kind of processing. And you can think about uh, what you can do with the, the microprocessor part. So the idea is that you have these two, uh, uh, say, hemispheres. And in the middle, you have what is called, uh, I think, uh, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, corpus callosum. It's uh, from uh, Latin. But the idea is that you have a very uh, a specific uh, uh, part of the brain, which is uh, uh, meant for the interconnection, very, very tight interconnection with lots of uh, 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 um, nervous uh, fibers between the left and the wrong and the right side. So uh, this is just a way to uh, uh, um, understand it, uh, uh, the concept uh, more in, uh, say, layman terms. This is just, OK, uh, a way to look at that from uh, the, an, an anatomy point of view, in the sense that the anatomy of the system is actually, uh, OK, arancino shaped. Now you can uh, absolutely say uh, relate to that arancino shaped kind of system. But inside, of course, you have a board, and you have a number of uh, uh, connectors, and you have a number of uh, also replaceable uh, uh, subsystems. So you can have, uh, for instance, uh, to actually tell you what is the first prototype we have already uh, almost ready to ship is uh, uh, actually a single MPU, single MCU kind of system, but where the single MPU part is replaceable, actually it is based on a Raspberry Pi 3 compute models. Uh, so it's a kind of uh, sodium connector. But we are also working on a different iteration of this system where on the MPU side you can have even uh, the uh, NVIDIA kind of uh, uh, GPU equipped uh, Jetson uh, uh, modules. So if you want to, to take more on uh, deep learning and kind of uh, AI related uh, tasks, uh, that's the kind of uh, uh, board you can think of. Uh, and still, of course, the uh, one or more uh, uh, microcontrollers uh, on, on the other side. So in the end, uh, okay, this is the uh, uh, same picture, but different term. Now, not, 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 not anymore the ecology, but also the economy. I mean, uh, the idea is that uh, we want to unlock a kind of uh, 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 pervasive uh, uh, approach to smart cities. So the idea is that uh, it's going to build, possibly, uh, a number of uh, virtues, uh, kind of uh, um, economies, of course, uh, uh, hub kind of based economies. Uh, and uh, um, what's important for that, and that this somehow also relates to the blockchain kind of stuff, is that uh, we, uh, uh, when we talk about the cloud, okay, you may, you may think uh, that there's some kind of uh, 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 contradiction in terms, because we're talking about centralization. But uh, our ultimate goal is not that, of course. The ultimate goal is the ability to always be able to uh, audit, to trace what's happening behind the scenes. So for instance, we have already some working uh, proof of concepts uh, where we have the cloud uh, managing the devices, but we also have uh, the opportunity to audit uh, and log independently the operations. Ultimately, I I the idea is that uh, it's not a standard cloud as you know it, because the standard cloud is uh, 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 a kind of metaphor where you absolutely know that the owner and uh, the administrator are the same person. Not the case with IoT. The idea, the idea is that in the smart city, you are going to be the owner. For instance, I'm the owner, uh, owner of several raspberries at home, but I want to contribute them as a citizen. I may be a good citizen, I don't know. Uh, anyway, if I want to contribute, the idea is that uh, I need to delegate. So I need to be able, of course, also to revoke delegation to, the, uh, to, to get access to the resources I put in the pool. So there's, uh, it's actually a concept which uh, uh, stems uh, from the idea of uh, crowdsourcing uh, stuff. As the uh, professor talked uh, before about crowd sensing, the idea is that we are also pooling resources from uh, different uh, and heterogeneous uh, uh, number of stakeholders. So in the end, here is just a recap of the, 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 the solutions. Uh, Stack for Things, we already talked about that. 
Arancino as well, this is just a recap of uh, the huge number of potential uh, uh, um, uh, products that we can put on, on the market because we can not, not only put on the market the single board, but we, we can also, of course, assemble ready-to-made boxes with a number of peripherals, which are not peripherals we build on our own. They are off the shelf. You can find them from uh, several third-party providers. Then there's Feluca, which is a, a, a service we are going to launch very soon, and it, it is uh, uh, meant to give uh, uh, remote access and remote control to your, uh, uh, say, uh, machines, including, of course, boards. So it's uh, actually uh, a way to be secure and uh, uh, privacy-oriented uh, in your uh, access to your resources. Uh, so, of course, the idea is that uh, we want to uh, lower the barriers for uh, the municipalities to, to, to get access to this kind of uh, uh, services and to the underlying uh, technology and the infrastructure. Okay, this is uh, just a, a picture of the team, uh, um, and this is uh, going to grow possibly very soon. Um, and uh, okay, this is the motto, maybe you've uh, seen that before in the Professor Pulifito slides. Uh, it's just one of our mottos, but it is very, very uh, pregnant, which is uh, that the smart cities are <laughs> actually meant to be done on a showstring budget. Uh, okay, and uh, I'm done with the presentation. Uh, any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you for your presentation, and uh, uh, in the last part you mentioned uh, some uh, crowd sensing technologies, and uh, what do you think about what, uh, in my opinion, uh, market mechanism should be uh, created to support and push forward such ideas like crowd sensing? Because nobody wants to just put, put the sensor and provide, provide the data for free. How to make it uh, more comfortable for users and earn the money from that? Sure. Uh, actually, um, uh, um, a partial answer to your question is uh, uh, what Professor Pulefito uh, told in his presentation about some of our uh, uh, efforts also on building, say, the incentives for, for people to to be engaging. In particular, it was uh, 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 an activity related to carpooling. But the idea was, uh, even in that, in that case, to uh, resort to decentralization mechanisms on one end, but also on the other, on the economics. In particular, in that uh, uh, space, uh, we were uh, working on a, a kind of a complementary uh, currency. So the idea was having something which could be used locally, as a kind of a local uh, uh, currency, a local uh, 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 way to trade uh, services and products, uh, because for example, in the blockchain, uh, the cryptocurrency produced by the uh, internal uh, algorithm, and uh, uh, participants who provide the working nodes, they own money uh, from the internal mechanics, but in that case. For example, I mentioned the Paris Agreement, and it's one of the ways how to provide uh, yeah. the payment for the data from the sensor. Uh, which how kind of agreement do you use? Paris said? Agreement. The, in the last year, uh, it's about car carbon pollution. Mm -hmm. the, before it was a uh, to to Tokyo Agreement, but it doesn't work, mm -hmm. and uh, they apply the new one. Yeah. yeah. Sure, uh, that's actually one of the, the main challenges, trying to, uh, to build the incentives. What we did mostly was on the technological side, so being able to enable people. For instance, uh, when we did the uh, crowdfunding campaign, which I didn't actually uh, 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 talk to you about, uh, just for reasons of uh, time, the, the idea was uh, starting from the, the crowdfunding just also as a way to engage people directly by having uh, sort of raising some interest. Not only, of course, money, because it was not that much actually, but was just as a way, uh, sorry? No, 
not only the money, I mean mostly the interest. But uh, of course it was still meant for, say, a, a, a not a, a huge pool of citizens, mostly was tinkerers, makers, uh, people who somehow are interested uh, with, uh, with technology. The problem I see, I, I agree, is that uh, uh, getting to the next level, so engaging uh, citizens al at large, is not uh, that easy, and uh, we need to find incentives. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, uh, I agree. I mean, uh, that can be a concern because actually, uh, at the moment, it's not so much of a concern, but it's going to grow uh, in the future. Uh, possibly a solution to, th to the, the, that problem could be trying as much as possible to share resources. So somehow our approach goes in that direction. Of course, uh, I, I totally agree still that uh, we need to people to care about that, try to, because it's a, it's a bit about car sharing. Typically, if you don't put incentives, people are not going to do that. But uh, once you do, you can uh, think about lots of uh, um, uh, possibilities of use cases. If you think that recently there's people talking about the raspberries, for instance, for powering VDIs, so virtual desktop infrastructure, so having desktops for students or for, uh, for faculty. So um, it can go in that direction, but of course uh, it needs to be carefully thought out. Uh, yeah, I want to add uh, a couple of words about the blockchain. Uh, for example, there is uh, uh, the several technologies like for the Bitcoin, it's a uh, lightning network where they use uh, the uh, necessary uh, computational capacity uh, for the work of this uh, network. And the second one, it's a sharding for the uh, this same one for the Ethereum blockchain, uh, it will reduce much more. computational power and the power of the network in the common. Uh, but uh, we actually, we, that's what I told, we can start to thinking about how to organize uh, the economical ga game around the Internet of Things to make it efficient. Because uh, all the rules, all the laws, and uh, what the government's doing, it's an economical game. It's only about the game, how the money will work for the purpose. And uh, here we can uh, estimate all, all, all the sensor, uh, like single sensor, is it useful or not? Is it uh, supply more uh, energy than provide the uh, additional value for the society? It's, it's possible, but we should think about how to make the game work. The new rules, uh, the new formal description uh, of the business processes for that, that's what I told about, how, how you uh, motivate the participants to uh, make the new sensors. Okay, Th this way we had, uh, we started, let's say, our panel, informal panel, and uh, uh, I don't know if you have any other comment or question. So, if not, I can wrap up everything uh, with uh, some final consideration about uh, IoT, about our speech, and so on. Um, so, the idea is that, as you can see, IoT is, uh, let's say, an, a, a theory, uh, something that is still uh, alive. It's uh, always uh, something that is uh, um, in progress, work in progress, everything is uh, work in progress in IoT. And there are several hot topics. We identify 
sort of them here. So energy consumption, energy, let's say, our um, solution at the, in the full stack, starting from hardware to software, as well as, uh, let's say, I can also like to talk about, let's say, a commoditization, a utility vision of IoT. This is something that, for example, Antonio tries to highlight. And uh, this is also in line, in a way, with your view of, uh, of service-oriented, let's say, IoT, where you have uh, uh, services uh, seen, uh, let's say, IoT devices as uh, uh, services that can exchange and then you can book them. This is very nice. It was not so easy to understand uh, in the video you showed before that uh, everything has been done through services that uh, in inject, uh, I don't know, a, a contract uh, and then the, uh, directly, machine to machine, mainly uh, implement uh, the, the rules that are explained in the contract. A manner, let's say, automatically. And this is a nice uh, solution. So, in general, just to wrap up, uh, I see that um, this context, the IoT one, is uh, um, a context, a, a scenario where several technologies, but not only, also solutions need to be to converge. So we talked about some of them here, but also we are there are also several, uh, um, let's say, experiments and also investigation in terms of uh, artificial intelligence. You mentioned some of them, cognitive IoT. Is one open, uh, quite open. So, how to implement intelligent uh, things, not only connected, but also a step further. Not smart, but uh, also intelligent, that are able to do, to implement some cognitive, some to reason, to make decisions autonomously, maybe, or just contacting you, maybe, for example. Another important, really important topic uh, that is not much covered here was related to, is related to data science, data management, uh, data analytics. It's also related to, inter to artificial intelligence and cognitive systems. We need a proper way to deal with uh, this big amount, huge amount of, amount of data that are collected by these uh, sensors in a different way and push it, I don't know, to the cloud and so on. Another topic that has been partially uh, addressed by Antonio and Giovanni is the one related to edge computing, where to process. As, as the, the idea is to push, let's say, uh, processing to the edge. So, and that's talking about edge and fog computing that uh, implement this idea of, of uh, in, of, uh, in exploiting these edge devices, the same mobiles or as well as uh, Raspberry Pi and so on, for real um, processes, not just the processing for simple, uh, um, so simple processing, but the real processes. So, uh, in my view, and uh, this is now, nowadays quite uh, in a way, it's not only my view. Anyway, one of the most important solutions I think is this concept among different disciplines. Uh, I don't know, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, on one hand, and we have data science on another hand. Uh, hardware uh, solution able to address energy uh, requirements. And uh, uh, so this is, let's say, a cross cut type. And uh, uh, where there are a lot of space for you, all of you, uh, to both invest in terms of both human resources, your brain, your own study, and so on, your study plan, and so on. But also in terms of it could also be a good, a nice, one more time, okay, before, a nice, um, let's say, business opportunity for all of you. We, uh, and all of us are were students. Then, from our study, all to where, then we invested some time in doing research. After that, we we translated our idea from, let's say, a research world, a research area, a bit more abstract, to a real world, and we created this. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, Startup, the uh, companies that have been uh, shown here that uh, have uh, 
quite a good success. Just a couple of minutes before, Alexander said that their crowd sale campaign with an IPO, remember, what was it, IPO? Initial coin offer, with their initial coin offer, they raised up to 1 million that then became something like 5 million euros, they say. So it's a, a nice, so it's a big option without putting in. So I would like one, one, one more time to highlight that you, are, you can do uh, a lot just investing on yourself and choosing uh, an interesting, uh, an open, let's say, a topic and area, scenario such as IoT and there are much, much more of what you think on which you can uh, focus. Uh, I hope uh, you, I don't know if you have uh, anything else to add uh, on the speaker. If not, we are quite... Uh, uh. I want to come back uh, about ideas uh, and topics. To how to organize, uh, how to motivate the participants uh, Sensor global sensor network. Uh, for example, I actually, uh, it's um, in our personal motivation, and we, we actually believe, it. for example, it's obvious that if we want to, to create a secure space, living space uh, uh, in the city, for example, right now it's provided by cameras, cameras from the uh, government, the police, I, I don't know. Companies, but in a big number of cases, there is no video recording. You can find niche nothing, and this is a problem. Uh, I actually, I'm not trusting uh, to the public cameras because, uh, in my opinion, they are mainly one uh, try to monitor what I'm doing, not for my security. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, and. It's, it's a good uh, point, uh, for example, if you're putting the, your personal camera outside the window and you are just sending the screen to the uh, distributed uh, network. It's a, uh, this is a good opportunity uh, to provide the security and to provide uh, the trust of data. This is and uh, you feel the motivation I want uh, that place to become secure without any problem. And uh, the same situation uh, actually with the uh, problems with the carbon pollution, with the water pollution. That's we, we want to drink your water, we want to breathe your air. But uh, right now we can't, we, we haven't any possibilities to get the uh, real information about uh, how it looks like the situation in global uh, and the creation of such sensor network is right now it's necessary for us uh, and uh, like uh, uh, some cities uh, for participation in such process you can earn So, thank you everybody for coming, thank you to the speaker, and uh, so for students, don't forget to sign the paper that uh, you can leave, uh, you know, uh, the table. So, good morning.
morning everybody and good uh, uh, bon appetit. Uh, yeah, I want to add uh, a couple of words about the blockchain. Uh, for example, there is uh, uh, the several technologies like for the Bitcoin, it's a uh, lightning network where they use uh, the uh, necessary uh, computational capacity uh, for the work of this uh, network. And the second one, it's a sharding for the uh, this same one for the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, it will reduce much more uh, the necessary computational power and the power of the network in the common. Uh, but uh, we actually, we, that's what I told, we can start to thinking about how to organize uh, the economical ga game around the Internet of Things to make it efficient. Because uh, all the rules, all the laws, and uh, what the government's doing, it's an economical game. It's only about the games how the money will work for the purpose. And uh, here we can uh, estimate all, all, all the sensor, uh, like single sensor, is it useful or not? Is it uh, supply more uh, energy than provide the uh, additional value for the society? It's, it's possible, but we should think about how to make the game work. The new rules, uh, the new formal description uh, of the business processes for that. That's what I told about how, how you uh, motivate the participants to uh, make the new sensors. Okay, Be this way we had uh, we started let's say our panel, informal panel, and uh, uh, I don't know if you have any other comment or question. So. If not, I can wrap up everything uh, with uh, some final consideration about uh, IoT, about our function. So, um, so the idea is that, as you can see, IoT is, uh, let's say, an, a, a theory, uh, something that is still uh, alive. It's uh, always uh, something that is uh, um, in progress, work in progress. Everything is uh, work in progress in IoT. And there are several hot topics. We identify a couple of them here. So energy consumption, energy, let's say, our um, solution at, uh, in the full stack, starting from hardware to software, as well as, uh, let's say, I can also like to talk about, let's say, a commoditization, IoT division of IoT. It is something that, for example, Antonio tries to highlight. And uh, this is also in line, in a way, with your view of, uh, of service-oriented, let's say, IoT, where you have uh, services uh, seeing, uh, let's say, IoT devices as uh, uh, services that can exchange and then you can book them. This is very nice. It was not so easy to understand uh, in the video you showed before that uh, everything has been done through services that uh, inject, uh, I don't know, a, a contract uh, and then the uh, directly machine to machine mainly uh, implement uh, the, the rules that are explained in the contract. A manner, let's say, automatically. And this is a nice uh, solution. So, in general, just to wrap up, uh, I see that um, this context, the IoT one, is uh, um, a context, a, a scenario where several technologies, but not only, also solutions need to be to converge. So we talked about some of them here, but also we are there are also several, uh, let's say, experiments and also investigation in terms of uh, artificial intelligence. You mentioned some of them, cognitive IoT. It's one open, uh, quite open, so how to implement intelligent uh, things, not only connected, but also a step further, not smart, uh, but uh, also intelligent, that are able to do, to implement some cognitive, so to reason, to make decisions autonomously, maybe, or just contacting you, maybe, for example. Another important, really important topic uh, that is not much covered here was related to, is related to 
data science, data management, uh, data analytics, it's also related to inter to artificial intelligence and cognitive systems. We need the proper way to deal with uh, this big amount, huge amount of, amount of data that are collected by these uh, sensors in a different way and push it down and off to the cloud and so on. Another topic that has been partially uh, addressed by Antonio and Giovanni is the one related to edge computing, where to process, as, as uh, the, the idea is uh, to push, let's say, uh, processing uh, to the edge. So, and that's talking about edge uh, and fog computing that uh, implement this idea of, of, uh, in, of uh, in exploiting these edge devices the same as mobiles so or as well as uh, Raspberry Pi and so on for real uh, processing, not just the processing for simple, uh, um, so simple processing, but the real processing. So, uh, in my view, and uh, this is now, nowadays quite, uh, in a way, it's not only my view. Anyway, one of the most important solutions uh, is this convergence among different disciplines. Uh, I don't know, uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, on one hand, and we have data science on another hand. Uh, are there uh, solutions able to address energy uh, requirements? And uh, uh, so this is, let's say, a cross-cut style. And uh, uh, where there are a lot of space for you, all of you, uh, to both invest in terms of both human resources, your brain, your own study, and so on, your study plan, and so on. But also in terms of, it could also be a good, a nice, once more time, we call a nice, um, it's a business opportunity for all of you. We, uh, and all of us, uh, were students. Then, from our study, all the way, then we invested some time in doing research. After that, we we translated our idea from, let's say, a research work, a research area, a bit more abstract, to a real world. And we created this uh, 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 st startup, the uh, companies that have been uh, shown here that uh, have uh, quite, uh, a lo uh, quite a good sus uh, success. Um, just uh, uh, a couple of minutes before, Alexander uh, said that their crowd sale campaign with uh, an IPO, I remember his Initial coin offer with their initial coin offer, they raised the up to one million that then become five, something like five million euros. They say so, it's a, a nice, so it's a big of two without putting in. So, I would like one, one, one more time to I like that you are you can do uh, a lot just investing on yourself and choosing. Uh, an interesting, uh, an open, let's say, uh, topic and area, scenario such as IoT, and there are much, much, much more of uh, on which you can uh, focus. Uh, I hope, uh, you, I don't know if you have uh, anything else to add uh, on the speaker. If not, we are quite. Uh, uh, I want to come back uh, about ideas uh, and subject to how to organize, uh, how to motivate uh, the participants uh, and, and do it uh, to include the new sensors to the sensor global sensor network. Uh, for example, I actually, uh, it's um, in our personal motivation and we, we actually believe, it. for example, it's obviously if we want to, to create the secure space, living space uh, uh, in the city, for example, right now it's provided by cameras, cameras from the uh, government, or the police, I, I don't know, from some companies, but in a big number of cases there is no video recording. 
we can find the lock. And this is a problem. Uh, uh, actually, I'm not trusting uh, to the public cameras because, uh, in my opinion, they are mainly mon uh, try to monitor what I'm doing, not for my security. <laughs> In my opinion, and uh, it's it's a good uh, point. Uh, for example, if you're putting the your personal camera outside the window, and you are just for what sending the screen to the uh, distributed, uh, it's a, uh, this is a good opportunity uh, to provide the security and to provide uh, the trustful data. This is. And uh, you feel the motivation, I want uh, that place to become secure without any problem. And uh, the same situation uh, actually with the uh, problems with the carbon pollution, with the water pollution. That's, we, we want to drink your water, we want to breathe your air, but uh, right now we can't, we we haven't any possibility to uh, get the uh, real information about uh, how to describe the situation in global. Uh, and the creation of such sensor network is right now it's necessary for us. Uh, and uh, like uh, uh, some suite uh, for participation in such process, you can earn Okay, so thank you everybody for coming, thank you to the speaker, and uh, so for students, don't forget to sign the paper that uh, you can leave uh, you know, uh, in the table. So, good morning everybody and good, uh, uh, good appetit.